This week, we prove our strength on the set of American Ninja Warrior. And we'll take you inside a few theme park private parties. Plus the latest theme park news and more coming at you right, right now. now. show is brought to you by MEI Travel, our preferred travel agent for Disney World, Universal, cruises, and all your vacation planning needs. For a free quote with no obligation, visit MEITravel.com. Undercover Tourist is our recommended supplier of discount tickets to Florida and California theme parks and attractions. For the best deals and planning tips, go to UndercoverTourist.com or find them on Facebook and Twitter. Hello and welcome to this week's episode of the show. I'm Banks. And I'm Elisa. So what's going on in the life of Elisa? <laughs> the life of Elisa. Well, <laughs> you know what? Jonathan and I have actually been trying to take little day trips every now and then just to kind of get away. But, but we're not going far, but it feels like, you know, we're away. Just kind of exploring Central Florida? Exploring Central Florida. Last week we went to Cocoa Beach, stayed the night there. Okay. It was really relaxing. And then this week we're going to St. Augustine. Oh. There's just so much to see here. There really is. There is a, so many little just out of the way places that yeah. you don't, not a lot of people know about, but they're just gorgeous and beautiful and relaxing. And it's only an hour or two drive away, so it's not even that far. Right. It's, it can be It can be a day trip. It doesn't have to be overnight. You can do day trips. Yeah, for sure. What yeah. about you? Well, um, I can't say much because um, it uh, doesn't come out till Friday, but I got to see an advanced screening of Jurassic World. Mm, no spoilers. No spoilers. No, no, no. I can't say anything. I'm embargoed. Yeah. My review will be on the uh, our blog Friday, but I can say that it is my favorite movie of the summer thus far. There's okay. still more movies to come out, but it is the sequel the first movie deserves. That's awesome. So it is, go see it. You have to go see it. I can't wait. I'm going Thursday. I'm so excited. Midnight showing? Oh, yes. Oh. <laughs> when, when it's over, you gotta, we got to talk about it. I know. I, mean, I know Jonathan's excited for it, too, and, so I, I, and I want to tell y'all stuff, but I can't right now because... <laughs> not yet, not yet. <laughs> he's mimicking a Velociraptor right now. <laughs> Jurassic Park, I can't yeah. wait! <laughs> <laughs> Let's get the news in the queue on. before I lose it. <laughs> First up this week, the name and the first concept art have been revealed for the upcoming Frozen ride at Epcot. An article in the Wall Street Journal revealed the ride will be called Frozen Ever After. Disney Imagineers have been testing a virtual reality ride through, watching images of Olaf and Sven horsing around, Grandpa Troll telling a magical story, and Elsa belting out to her song Let It Go. Of course. <laughs> the boat ride track will remain the same as it was when it was the Maelstrom ride at Epcot. The ride will feature all new scenes with animatronic characters with projected faces. Visit our website for more details on many of the ride scenes. This is still a hot hot topic uh, that's discussed in the Disney community. Still a lot of people are upset about Maelstrom closing mm -hmm. and you know all that anger is now brought back up with all this new info and stuff. But I mean, I th I'm very much looking forward to this ride. I, I yeah. love Frozen. I love Maelstrom, but I don't know. Frozen, it's, I don't know. I'm, it's hard to explain why I'm right. excited. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, we are very sad that Maelstrom is gone, but it's inevitable. Frozen is coming. Let's make the most of it. And I really like the animatronics with the projection faces. Yeah, just like Seven Dwarfs. Yeah, because it's so cool when you go through Seven Dwarfs, but it goes so fast. But if the projection faces are going to be throughout the entire ride, hopefully, we'll see them more, and it'll look really and good. And it'll really be able to showcase Elsa singing her hit song. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I mean, the track is really long. This is a long ride. It'll be about a four-minute long ride. Yeah. So it's definitely going to be... A great attraction. I can't wait to take Spencer on. She loves Frozen. She loves her Frozen dolls. So uh, she'll definitely grow up to love this ride. I'm I can sure. just see all the kids just belting out with Elsa. Kids, I'm gonna be with them. <laughs> going, let it go. <laughs> it's gonna be great. I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> NBA City is closing at Universal City Walk in late August, and the NBA experience has been announced for Disney Springs. Disney and the National Basketball Association announced they have begun developing the NBA experience over at Disney Springs. This expansive destination will feature hands-on NBA-related activities. Guests will enjoy immersive NBA video productions and numerous interactive experiences as well as a restaurant and a retail store. Universal has decided not to renew the lease for NBA City so they could create an exciting new concept for that space. 
Switching, switching parks here. NBA moving, packing their bags, yeah. heading down I-4. Yeah, I think Disney Springs is going to have such a diverse, you know, amount of things there, which is really great. There's something for literally everyone. It's true. It's true. And it, it should uh, be opening, I think, sometime in 2016, maybe 2017 for this one. Don't know for sure. Mm -hmm. But I'm excited to see all that. And I'm excited to see what's going to be taking NBA City's place because that's right. a big space there it at City Walk. Personally, I, I know they will. I think we'll talk about it in a little bit. They may be the Hello Kitty store. Mm -hmm. Um I would like to see a Nintendo World store go there. That would be exciting. With their new Nintendo partnership. That would Something be Something that's not sports related. Right, because yeah. they already got the NBC Sports Grill, so we're done with sports. Let's, mm -hmm. let's move on and get another concept. For sure. Kennedy Space Center Visitor Complex has broken ground on a new next generation attraction designed to touch the hearts and minds of future space explorers. Heroes and Legends featuring the U.S. Astronaut Hall of Fame is scheduled to open in 2016. The attraction will bring to life the stories of America's first astronauts and invite guests to experience the thrills and dangers of America's earliest missions through high-tech elements and special effects. The highlight of Heroes and Legends is a 3D omnidirectional theater designed to make guests feel as though they are floating in space. How have you been to the visitor complex before? I have. I haven't been there in a long time, and I, I love going there. Yeah. Yeah, it's a great place to go, and I think this is going to be a really fun attraction. It really is awe-inspiring. Yeah. Just, you know, to see all these things and, and places, you know, they've been to space. This is where they launched to go to space, so it's really neat to see that. I haven't been back since they opened the new Atlantis exhibit. With Neither the, have I. I was there when they brought the Atlantis in, but... Yeah, I need to get back there and see that, and I want to definitely want to see this too. It's also a good alternative if you can't handle Mission Space at Epcot, because yes. I can't. Even it gives me a headache every time. So. Yes, yes, and it's it's one, like like we were talking about at the top of the show. It's one of those places. It's about an hour outside of Orlando, but it's definitely a great place to go Worth and visit it. for the day. Mm -hmm. Sanrio and Universal Parks and Resorts have announced, as I said earlier, a partnership to develop Hello Kitty shops. The deal will mark Hello Kitty's official retail debut at theme parks in North America and offer specialty merchandise including stationery, home goods, apparel, accessories, and collectibles. Customers will be able to shop for custom designed merchandise, enjoy photo opportunities with Sanrio properties, create souvenir versions of Hello Kitty's signature bow, and even meet Hello Kitty herself. There's no word where the new retail experience will go, but currently there is a Hello Kitty merchandise cart located in Universal City Walk. Like I said, it could, it could go where NBA City is, it could go other places, it could go in the actual theme parks, it might not just be City Walk. Mm -hmm. um, Hello Kitty, I mean, it's been around for a long time, but it's still popular to this day. She is very popular. I, I'm not a biggest Hello Kitty fan, but I know there are a lot of fans. When I think of meeting Hello Kitty, honestly, I think of Hello Kitty on Times Square. That is like the not, you know, <laughs> the crazy not official as one. Be. Not official. So it'll be good to see an official one. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm just imagining you. Saying, Hi, Hello Kitty. No, no. <laughs> no. No, 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 no. Not on Times Square. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I definitely agree. Um, Sydney, I think, is, is she's a huge fan of Hello Kitty. Oh, so nice. she'll, she'll enjoy this. And there's been a lot of, you know, the the Florida Mall, I think the Florida Mall, Millennium Mall, there's a lot of little Hello Kitty shops around town and other towns, but they aren't official. Right. So it'd be great to see an actual official one and what mm -hmm. they uh, what they offer. Definitely. SeaWorld and Aquatica are showcasing new nighttime entertainment throughout the summer. From June 20th through August 9th, SeaWorld will feature summer nights where families can stay later for more thrills and laughs. The events include Celebrate America concert series and Shamu celebration light up the night. Beginning July 3rd, Aquatica heats things up with Island Nights, an all new beach party taking place from 5 to 9 p.m every Friday and Saturday through August 8th. Guests will be able to enjoy live DJs, dancing on the beach, and an evening menu at Water, uh, Waterstone Grill. Both parks' events are included with admission. I'm excited for this. I love Summer Nights. I mean, I fell in love with the Light of the Night last year. It mm -hmm. was my favorite. It is my favorite Shamu show. Yeah. It's great. I think bringing Island Nights to Aquatica this year is a really good move because during the summer, when the sun goes down, it feels really nice out. It, yes. You know what I mean? And that's the perfect time to dance and just have a good time and be right by the pool. And also, what's really nice about the America Concert Series at SeaWorld is it's actually going to be inside Nautilus Theater. It's going to be oh, air conditioned. Oh, it's not going to be at the, Bay, the Bayside Theater. No, it's actually going to be air conditioned. It's oh, going to be perfect. Yeah, so 5 and 7 p.m. around, I think, are the times. So it'll be a time where you're just ready to get out of the heat. You won't have to worry about it getting canceled because of the weather. Right. Oh, well, this is part good moves. Yeah, it's going to be really good I mean, summer. I mean, what uh, the the what was the show that was there in the theater? Allure. Remember. Allure. I wanted mm -hmm. to say Azul, but that's in a different SeaWorld Park. Yeah, Allure. I mean, it's sad that that's gone, but this is actually perfect. Mm -hmm. Special events theater, Great putting space. all this stuff in there. All right, looking forward to this one. Mm -hmm. Hi everybody! 
Welcome to Hidden Mickey of the Week. Go to Once Upon a Toy Store. There's a big interactive fountain near the store and you'll get a trifecta Hidden Mickey here. First of all, the water tube heads that the spouts come out of are shaped like classic Mickeys. Secondly, recessed lights in the cement are arranged in a classic Mickey shape. And third, the fountain water itself collects in a huge classic Mickey on the cement. Very cool effect. Thanks, calm down. You're not a ninja. Who says I'm not? I did one of the American Ninja Warrior obstacle courses when they were filming at Universal the other week. Oh, how'd you do on it? I'd say I did all right. Not good enough to be on the show, though. The Universal Orlando episode airs on Monday. Well, let's see how you did first. All right, we'll check this out. Well, we are here at Universal Orlando where the NBC and Esquire Network show American Ninja Warrior is filming a couple of episodes right out in the New York section of the park. I'm so excited because I watch this show all the time. In fact, you know, I watch it so much really that I, I can conquer this course. I really could. Give me an obstacle. I, I can do this. This is it's all muscle right here. Let's go inside and check it out. So I've been watching this show for years. You've been all over the country, and now you're here in Orlando, Universal Studios. First time in a theme park, I believe. So how's it? How is it here? It's it's awesome. Look, I love I love Harry Potter. So I spent all day <laughs> today. All these other people were training and figuring out the obstacles. I was going through the Wizarding World. I went through Gringotts. <laughs> I got a wand. It was great. Expelliarmus! I really, it's amazing. I mean, the, the rides here are incredible. I actually work on another show in LA on Universal Studios Los Angeles, and I realized that thing's like a parking lot compared to this place. This right? This place is amazing. You know, it's been pretty exciting to tell you the truth. I mean, it gets it gives you the feel like right now that we're situated in the middle of New York, and when you got guys who are competing amongst buildings, usually we're out in the open air, open building, you know, something is in the backdrop. You're surrounded by buildings, so you get the magical feel here at Universal. This has been one of my favorite locations. I got here yesterday, and it was just beautiful. It feels like you're in New York where we are, and then there was a fireworks show, which looks really cool with the set. Um, and there's also like really good Starbucks and Dippin' Dots and Ben and & Jerry's within walking distance, which is nice, it's hot here. <laughs> yeah, seeing, seeing everyone do this, is there one obstacle that you're always surprised to see you know, people aren't really able to do all that much? I, I, I'm never surprised anymore because we, we design these obstacles and we, we think we know how people are going to do on them and inevitably one we think is going to be hard, people blow through and then one you think is going to be simple gives people problems. I think a lot of times the things we, we underestimate is just the psychology of it, the mental difficulty of if people start failing on an obstacle early on, it becomes a, a stumbling point. People overanalyze it mm -hmm. and an obstacle they could probably do, they end up tripping on. So out here, this is, uh, the courses this year have, it's been a quantum leap in difficulty and I don't think this one's any different. Um, I think I, I, I think obstacles two through five are all going to be brutal. So I'm not sure what which one's going to be tripping people up. But look, I would love everybody to get to the top of the warp wall. I, I, I pull for everyone, but it's they're going to have their hands full tonight. And I got to know because they're let, they're letting me test out the. Oh, you're doing it! Thing. They're letting me test out the, the quintuple first one step. Right here. Did you bring a swimsuit? I didn't bring a swimsuit, but I brought a change of clothes because I don't think I'm going. to... You have any tips for me? Yeah, go slow. Just <laughs> hug onto them. Hug on to them. The, the cool people try to bound through it. The gazelles, they make it look easy. Yeah. I think the small ones just go on two foot technique, hug, hug it like it's your mom, and then go to the next one and hug onto that. Look, again, it's much easier sitting up in a host stand saying what you should do. Uh -huh. I, if I were there, I would probably just turn around and say, I'm, I'm tapping, just stick a finger in the water, go, <laughs> I'm disqualified. <laughs> <laughs> There you go! 
you know I'm really good at coaching. Yes. I'm really good at coaching. Okay, so here's what you want to do. How tall are you? I'm about 6'2". Okay, you're 6'2". Mm -hmm. You want to be able to use all of your glute muscles. Your glute muscles, your butt muscles. Okay? Okay. okay. And you want to be able to transfer your weight from side to side and explode. Don't think about it. What ends up happening is most guys, they look and they get afraid of the water. They see water and they get scared, all right? So you gotta go from one side to the next side to the next side. It's called bounding. Bounding, exploding, using your glutes. Say glutes. Glutes. Nice. Watch the guys that are going through and testing it right now, or the guys, the ATS people who actually build it, um, and see what their technique is because it's supposed to be like the first thing you can probably get through it, but it's a lot harder than it looks. It, and you don't want to go down on the first obstacle. No. That's embarrassing. I'm sorry. No, I understand. Um, and you're going to get wet. But actually, it's so hot out, that might be nice. I would be to love it. It definitely looks a lot wider than it does on TV. Yeah, it's wider, but I heard that there's like a triple step option that is the best way to attack it. Like one, and then a double step, a three, and then jump. Huh. Or you can do the technique where you like grab onto one and then grab onto the next one. So, do you know what your technique is going to be at? I've heard so many different techniques. I've, I've heard to power through and just one, go one at a time. I've heard to do the double step. I don't know what I'm going to do just yet. I would just watch as many of these testers as I can. Okay. okay. That's my best yeah. no, look, I'm telling you, if I don't, look, I'll, I'll be standing here on your run now. Oh boy. I want to see, <laughs> I want to see you use your glutes. Don't do the whole cat grab. Don't yeah, do the I've cat grab. Yeah, I've seen people do that don't where they just the, go one at a time. Don't do the cat grab. Okay. You got to man up. You just, just don't do just the cat grab. Just run and just go. Just run. Go with it. You six two. You got God is giving you long legs. Yes. Use them. All right, let's All right. do it. Are you ready? I'm ready. Chest bump. Everyone else has told me to, to go the two Don't step. think about it. You're thinking too much right now. Oh. This is your time right now. This is your time to get ready right now. Yes. You got to get pumped. Everything you got, everything you need, right here, right now. You explode you through those quintuple steps. You go, explode. Go for you it. You take it. You own it. You own it. <laughs> you 6'2". You were born for this. I got this. Got this. Let's do it. Let's go. King Kong ain't got nothing on you. <laughs> All right. Here we go. Ready? I'm ready. Here we go. Oh! <laughs> you know what? I'm proud of you though. You had it. That was the right concept. You had it. Look. I'm proud of you. That was great. That was great. But I just lost my you, 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 lost, you lost the energy. <laughs> that was big time. <laughs> that is definitely harder than it looks. I know it's the first one and I failed it, so. But look, it's not my fault. I'm not a major warrior. Let me leave this to the professionals, okay? I, if he wasn't if he wasn't there really on me to do just power through, I would have taken my time. But adrenaline gets in you and you just go for it. I'm surprised I made it halfway. But if you're gonna do this, momentum. Definitely your friend. Do I go at an angle like this? Yeah, you gotta go at an angle, man. All right. You got this. YOLO! Oh! Yeah! See, my wet shoes are not helping you. Oh! All right, this is one I've always seen on the show. You have to hang on and roll down while it's spinning. I would love to try this one. I probably wouldn't be able to hang on because if you look at the handles, there's really nowhere good to grasp your fingers. You just gotta be, have a good, strong grip. If I can't even do the first obstacle, there's no hope for me with the rest of this. No. No way. Nope. 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 All right, that's your look at American Ninja Warrior Season 7 filming here at Universal Studios Florida. I'm so excited for this. It's going to debut later this year. As you see, the audience is already set, but we can't show you anything that's going to happen during the taping. Don't want to spoil it for you. Be sure to tune in on NBC and Esquire Network later on. Now, you have a, uh, such a unique way of saying the title of the show, American Ninja Right. How, how is it you do it? American Ninja Warrior. The next time you plan a Disney vacation, book with a travel agency that's been specifically designated as an authorized Disney vacation planner. Unlike some other agencies, many of our agents' exclusive knowledge of Walt Disney World can help you get the most out of your vacation, and the assistance of our travel professionals can help you get a customized Disney vacation that's just right for you, your family, and your budget. Start planning your magical vacation today by visiting mousefantravel.com. If you follow our social media accounts, you've probably seen our photos and videos from various private parties at the different theme parks around Orlando recently. All these parties have one thing in common. They were all part of the IPW convention that was in town. We sent banks to find out just what IPW is all about. 
I'm here at the Orange County Convention Center for IPW 2015. Now, what exactly is IPW? Well, it's our first time here. Uh, we're thinking it's tourism, travel, conference, convention. You know, I'm not really sure. Let's go inside and see if we can find someone to explain it to us. I gotta know, because this is my first time here at IPW, and a lot of our viewers aren't too familiar with what it is, so how can you explain this to them? So this is an amazing marketplace. We have every one of the top American destinations, attractions, hotel brands, you name it, anybody that's in the world of the travel world of, of um, providing services for visitors, they're here on the floor today. And it's here in Orlando, it's one of the top destinations in, in the country. No, it is the largest, it is the single largest destination in the United States. I think the number is 62 million uh, visitors uh, came to Orlando last year. That's, uh, that's a pretty significant number and a number that the folks here in Orlando are really, really proud of. This is a different type of, uh, of um, trade show. A lot of trade shows, you see a lot of uh, demos and of uh, the equipment or uh, let's say in the amusement park rides. Mm -hmm. Here, business is being done. We have uh, 1,350 booths of uh, people with their goods and, and services. We have 6,000 delegates who are here, but the buyers, the people who are buying the travel product are from overseas. The overseas um, uh, buyers are actually transacting business with the domestic U.S. supplier companies in the, po in the purpose of actually getting more visitors to come to the United States to experience America, right? And so over three days, we will have facilitated over 100,000 person-to-person -person appointments between buyers and sellers. And during, the next, during the, this, this trade show, there will be nearly $5 billion worth of uh, commerce actually written in contracts. It's really amazing. We're here on the show floor at IPW. You'll see many booths here from attractions to hotels to cities showcasing what they have to offer in the tourism industry. Now, it's not open to the public, but I'm going to walk around and get you a little peek of what they have here at, oh my gosh, Beyonce, hold on. So we're here in the Merlin booth, and if you didn't know, Merlin owns Legoland Florida, the Orlando Eye, Sea Life Orlando, and Madame Tussauds. And actually, look at here, Beyonce. Hi, Beyonce, how are you doing? It's good to see you out of the museum. So walking around the show floor here at IPW, you can get kind of hot, so you, you want to keep yourself cool and uh, stop by here at the Ripley's booth here, and they got some fans here. This guy right here let me have a fan, but the, the, the thing is, you have to do this. So for those who don't know, I'm from a town called Texarkana. It's split in half by the border of Texas and Arkansas, so I consider those two states both my home states. I'm outside the Texas booth here at IPW. I want to go check out what's going on with my home. So you might recognize this couch that I am sitting on. This is the actual couch from Friends, the Central Perk set of the show. I just recently binge watched this, so I'm kind of excited to be sitting on this right now. And actually right here next to me, this is concept art for the Warner Brothers Studio Tour. It's called Stage 48 Script to Screen. It's a brand new experience coming soon where you'll be able to film a scene yourself on the Friends set, or you can even go on a green screen, film on the Bat Pod, Broom 6 from Harry Potter, I'm very excited. Warner Brothers Studio Tour in Hollywood. Next time I'm in California, I'm checking this out. So yes, as you said, lots and lots of business going on here, but there's also a little bit of entertainment happening as well. You can't have a tourism without entertainment, right? Well, you know, the travel industry is really a great industry for being hospitable and having a lot of fun to do, right? So each day, in fact, we're getting ready to break for lunch in a couple of minutes. Each day we have a major piece of entertainment that takes place while we feed our 6,000 plus delegates. Yesterday, the rock band Foreigner entertained our group. They had everybody up on their feet and hands clapping. It was awesome. Today. Broadway is bringing six acts from New York and they're performing for our delegates six shows in 35 minutes, which is going to be fantastic. And then tomorrow at lunch, Disney is doing two shows, but I can't tell you because it's a secret. But it's going to be, again, an absolute showstopper of, an, of a day. Then there's nighttime. So on Sunday night, we started with Disney closing their park early and welcoming all of our delegates to the Magic Kingdom. Last night, we had a fantastic show at SeaWorld. 
And on Wednesday night, we're going to Universal, and it's all about Harry Potter, Men in Black, and Transformers. So our delegates love it, and boy, this is how we, this is how we roll. We work hard during the day, and we party hard at night. So that is just a small peek at the show floor here at IPW. As you heard about earlier, another big part of this conference are the private parties at the local theme park. So here are some highlights from Magic Kingdom and Universal Orlando. If you're flying into Orlando on a long flight, don't forget to bring a few things to keep yourself entertained. For example, download some theme park related movies onto your devices or bring a portable DVD player. Some people may only think of this for kids, but who says adults can't watch too? Another thing to do that may seem more obvious is bring a book or download one. And finally, of course, there's always games for your phone. Just make sure it's fully charged before you take off and don't forget to bring your chargers. Skip the lines with undercover tourists, crowd calendars, touring plans, and mobile apps. Stop paying full price for your family vacation and visit Undercover Tours today. Before we get to the calendar, we want to say congratulations to Anthony Markham of Sanford, North Carolina for winning our D23 anniversary prize pack. Congrats, Anthony. And now for this week's calendar. First up this Saturday, Huey Lewis and the News will be performing at Universal Orlando's 25th anniversary concert series. And until the 13th, DSB, a tribute to Journey, is performing at Epcot's Sounds Like Summer concert series. And To You, a tribute to U2, will be performing from the 14th through the 20th. Remember, you can subscribe to our calendar at Attractions Magazine com to stay up to date on these events and more. And now we want to thank MEI Travel, our preferred travel agent for cruises, Disney World, Universal, and all your other vacation planning needs. For a free quote with no obligation, visit MEITravel.com. And much thanks to Undercover Tourist, our recommended supplier of discount tickets to Orlando and California attractions. For more information, visit UndercoverTourist.com. Remember, you can watch a brand new episode of the show each week on YouTube, Bright House Channel 999, iTunes, and through the O-Town app on Roku and Amazon Fire. You can also visit attractionsmagazine.com for news and videos throughout the week. If you enjoy our show, please support it by subscribing to our magazine through our website 
in our app or on the Nook. Our summer issue is now available for pre-purchase through our website. The issue will get you up to date on all the new things at iDrive 360. All right, so, you know, it's like, it's like I said at the top of the show, Jurassic World comes out this weekend. Go see it. Just, just stop what you're doing right now. Get tickets. Well, finish the show. Then go get <laughs> tickets and go see the movie. I know. I cannot wait. I'm, gonna, I'm planning on seeing it in IMAX, and then I need to get over to Universal to see the Raptor. Yes. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's perfect. You, you go, if, if you're in town, if you have the luxury of being in Orlando when it comes out, go see it at Universal's, uh, the CityWalk AMC, then go straight from there into Islands of Adventure and go to Jurassic Park. Because you trust me, when you see this movie, you really want to the, go to the park. It, you get that feeling. Yeah. So, awesome. Yeah. Thank you so much for joining us, and we hope you'll tune in again next week. Until then, visit your local attractions, try something new, stay safe, but most of all, have, have fun. fun. So tune into NBC and this quad. Ah, darn. Woman, a few words. Three, two. That's my line. <laughs> <laughs> then horsing around, Grandpavi troll, troll, troll. Sorry. Oh, who says I'm not? I I did one of the American. You did. Yeah. <laughs>